Hello friends, today we will discuss on the topic radioactive pollution, waste management and control. There are many uses of radioactive materials that improve or facilitate human activities or quality of life of people. These uses are given in different fields of technology ranging from power generation to supply entire cities or areas to medical and industrial uses even the smoke detectors in buildings. All these applications generate radioactive waste that may represent risks to the environment or to human beings, but it is necessary to have special attention to the management of radioactive waste. Dear friends, in today's lecture there is an information about the generalities of radioactive wastes such as it is definition, origin, classification and stages of radioactive waste management. In addition, there are information about the current state of research and technologies that are available and have been proposed for the treatment of radioactive waste and proper storage and disposal. Dear students, radioactive waste is a type of hazardous waste that contains radioactive material. Radioactive waste is a byproduct of various nuclear technology processes. Industries generating radioactive waste include nuclear medicine, nuclear research, nuclear power, manufacturing, construction, coal and rare earth mining and nuclear weapons reprocessing. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the origin of radioactive waste. Radioactive waste are created from all activities that radioactive materials are used either as a part of the processes or the use of such materials as a constituent of equipment or instruments that allow the realization of a practice. Due to large differences in the characteristics of the waste generated in the different areas and to a better understanding of these origins is convenient to differentiate the activities coming from nuclear fuel cycle of applications coming from the medical research activities and industrial uses. Nuclear power is the only large scale energy producing technology that takes full responsibility for all its waste and fully costs this into the product. Dear students, the amount of waste generated by nuclear power is very small relative to other thermal electricity generation technologies. Nuclear waste is neither particularly hazardous nor hard to manage related to other toxic industrial waste. Dear students, all toxic waste needs to be dealt with safely, not just radioactive waste and in countries with nuclear power. Radioactive waste comprises a very small proportion of total industrial hazardous waste generated. The natural radiations are also called as background reactions as the cosmic rays are involved and the surface of the earth is reached from space. These include radioactive elements like uranium, thorium, radon, carbon and radium. These elements are traced in soil water and rock. While man-made traditions include refining of plutonium, thorium and mining, explosion and production of nuclear power plants and radioactive isotopes as well as nuclear fuels. There are two main sources of radioactive wastes. 
first medical and industrial radionuclides and wastes. The production of radionuclides in small reactors usually dedicated to the production of medical and research radionuclides eventually leads to the creation of a radioactive wastes in hospitals, research laboratories and ultimately in the locations where they are used and discarded or managed, most often in hospitals. Canada is the world's major supplier of a reactor produced medical radionucleoids, especially cobalt 60. Industrial radionucleoids such as iridium 192 with a half life of 73.8 days and used for weld inspections, or cesium 137 with a half life of 30 years and widely used in level guards, are usually of much longer half life and are thus transported much less frequently and when retired are required to be stored for a much longer period. Did students radioactive shipments are generally not associated with commercial nuclear power facilities. This commercially produced cobalt 60 is manufactured into medical therapy devices and is used in the materials research and in other commercial irradiation devices for product sterilization and increasingly to kill life threatening bacteria in meat, fish, poultry and other raw foods. Now the reactor wastes. The world use of uranium in energy production power reactors creates relatively small amounts of a cement fuel each year about 15,000 tons and moderately large volumes of relatively low level wastes that is about 45,000 cubic meter. Most of the unconsumed low radioactive uranium and transuranium nucleides like plutonium which together make up about 95 percent of the cement fuel could be recycled and used in further reactor cycles. As a result, most cement fuel is at least temporarily managed as waste. After 10 to 15 half lives about 300 to 500 years for a longer lived fission nucleoids like strontium 90 and cesium 137, all of the significant fission nucleoids have decayed away leaving the cement fuel only a little more radioactive than the uranium it started as. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the types of radioactive waste. Radioactive waste includes any material that is either intrinsically radioactive or has been contaminated by radioactivity and that is deemed to have no further use. Every radionucleoid has a half life. The time taken for a half of its atoms to decay and thus for it to lose half of its radioactivity. So, radionucleoids with long half lives tend to be alpha and beta emitters making their handling easier while those with short half lives tend to emit the more penetrating gamma rays. Eventually all radioactive waste decays into non radioactive elements. Radioactive waste is typically classified on its level of radioactivity as first low level waste or intermediate level waste or high level waste. The low level waste has a radioactive content not exceeding 4 giga becquerels per ton of alpha activity or 12 giga becquerels per ton beta gamma activities. Low level waste does not require shielding during handling and transport and is suitable for disposal in near surface facilities. So, low level waste is generated from hospitals and industry as well as the nuclear fuel cycle. It comprises 
paper, rags, tools, clothing, filters, etc., which contain small amounts of most short lived radioactivity. Low level waste comprises some 90 percent of volume, but only 1 percent of the radioactivity of all radioactive waste. Second, intermediate level waste. This type of waste is more radioactive to than low level waste, but the heat it generates that is less than 2 kilowatt per cubic meter is not sufficient to be taken into account in the design or selection of a storage and disposal facilities due to its higher levels of radioactivity. Intermediate level of waste requires some shielding. Intermediate level waste typically comprises resins, chemical sludge and metal fuel cladding as well as contaminated materials from reactor decommissioning. Smaller items and any non solids may be solidified in concrete or bitumen for disposal. Now, the high level wastes. High level waste is sufficiently radioactive for its decay heat that is greater than 2 kilowatt per cubic meter to increase its temperature and the temperature of its surroundings. Significantly so, high level waste requires cooling and shielding. High level waste arises from the burning of uranium fuel in a nuclear reactor. High level waste contains the fission products and transuranic elements generated in the reactor core. High level waste accounts for just 3 percent of volume, but 95 percent of total radioactivity of produced waste. Dear students, there are two distinct kinds of high level waste. Used fuel that has been designated as waste, separated waste from reprocessing of used fuel. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the principles of radioactive waste management. RADVAS is the acronym for the Radioactive Waste Safety Standards Program. The agency has been coordinating a three year effort among its member states to reach international consensus on the safety fundamentals or principles of radioactive waste management. The radioactive waste shall be managed in a way like to secure an acceptable level of protection for human health, to provide an acceptable level of protection of the environment, that possible effects on human health and environment beyond national borders will be taken into account, that predicted impacts on the health of future generations will not be greater than the relevant levels of impact that will not impose undue burdens on future generations. Generation of radioactive waste shall be kept to the minimum practicable within an appropriate national legal framework including clear allocation of responsibilities and provision for independent regulatory functions that radioactive waste generation and management shall be appropriately taken into account. Safety of facilities for radioactive waste management shall be appropriately assured during their lifetime. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the management of different categories of wastes. First, the very low level waste, exempt waste and very low level waste contains radioactive materials at a level which is not considered harmful to the people or the surrounding environment. It consists mainly of demolished material produced during rehabilitation or dismantling operations on nuclear industrial sites. Other industries such as food processing, chemical, steel, etcetera also produce very low level waste 
as a result of the concentration of natural radioactivity present in certain minerals used in their manufacturing processes. The waste is therefore, disposed of with domestic refuse, although countries such as the France or currently developing specifically designed very low level waste disposal facilities. The fuel cycle involves the mining and milling of uranium ore, its processing and fabrication into nuclear fuel. It is used in the reactor, it is reprocessing the treatment of the used fuel taken from the reactor and finally, disposal of the waste. Dear students, mining through to fuel fabrication. Traditional uranium mining generates fine sandy tailings, which contain virtually all the naturally occurring radioactive elements found in uranium ore. The tailings are collected in engineer dams and finally, covered with a layer of a clay and rock to inhibit the leakage of radon gas and to ensure long term stability. In the short term, the tailings material is often covered with water. After a few months, the tailings material contains about 75 percent of the radioactivity of the original ore. Now, the reprocessing of used fuel. Any used fuel will still contain some of the original uranium 235 as well as various plutonium isotopes that have been formed inside the reactor core and uranium 238. In total, these account for some 96 percent of the original uranium and over half of the original energy content used nuclear fuel has long been reprocessed to extract fissile materials for recycling and to reduce the volume of a high level waste. Dear students, several European countries as well as Russia, China and Japan have policies to reprocess used nuclear fuel. Reprocessing allows for a significant amount of plutonium to be recovered from user fuel, which is then mixed with depleted uranium oxide in a MOX fabrication plant to make fresh fuel. This process allows some 25 to 30 percent more energy to be extracted from the original uranium ore and significantly reduces the volume of high level waste. The main historical and current process is purex, a hydrometallurgical process. The main prospective ones are electrometallurgical, often called pyroprocessing, since it happens to be hot. With it, all actinide anions like uranium and plutonium are recovered together. Then, the legacy waste. Did students, in addition to the routine waste from current nuclear power generation, there is other radioactive waste referred to as legacy waste. This waste exists in several countries that pioneered nuclear power and especially where power programs were developed out of military programs. It is sometimes voluminous and difficult to manage and arose in the course of those countries getting to a position where nuclear technology is a commercial proposition for power generation. Now, the non-nuclear power waste, there has been increased attention on how to effectively manage non-power related nuclear waste all countries including those that do not have nuclear power plants have to manage radioactive waste generated by activities unrelated to the production of nuclear energy including national laboratory and university research activities 
user and lost industrial gods and radiography sources and nuclear medicine activities at hospitals. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the treatment and conditioning. Treatment involves operations intended to change waste streams characteristics to improve safety or economy. Treatment techniques may involve compaction to reduce volume, filtration or ion exchange to remove radionucleoid content or precipitation to induce change in composition. Conditioning is undertaken to change waste into a form that is suitable for safe handling, transportation, storage and disposal. This setup typically involves the immobilization of waste in containers. Liquid low level waste and intermediate level waste are typically solidified in cement, whereas high level waste is dried then vitrified in a glass matrix. Dear students, the aim of the radioactive waste treatment is to minimize the volume of a waste requiring management. Now, dear students, we will talking about it. Treatment process. The selection for waste depends upon its radiological and physiochemical properties and the quantity as well. There are various ways to treat radioactive wastes. First, treatment of aqueous waste. The processes available for treating aqueous radioactive wastes are chemical precipitation, ion exchange or sorption, evaporation. Now, the chemical precipitation. Chemical precipitation processes are regularly used for removing radioactivity from low and intermediate level aqueous wastes at fuel reprocessing facilities, research laboratories and power stations. Precipitation processes are greatly versatile, relatively low investment and operational costs and may treat from large volumes of liquid effluents containing relatively low concentrations of active species to those containing large amounts of particulates or high concentration of inactive salts. Now, dear students, we will be talking about ion exchange or sorption process. The ion exchange methods have extensive applications to remove soluble radionucleoids from liquid waste produced in nuclear fuel cycle operations, radioisotope production and research facilities. It is very effective at transferring the radioactive content of a large volume of a liquid into a small volume of a solid. Ion exchange process involves the replacement of a cations or anions between an insoluble solid matrix containing ionizable polar groups and a liquid solution. Now, the evaporation. The evaporation process is effective for concentrating or removing salts heavy metals and a variety of hazardous materials from waste effluent reducing large volumes of a liquid wastes with high factor decontaminations. The process is commonly used for the treatment of high, intermediate and low level waste effluents. In particular for the treatment of small volumes of highly active effluents and may be carried out through the use of commercially available evaporation equipment. Now, the treatment of radioactive organic liquid. The liquid scintillation solvents, oils and diverse biological fluids generated in nuclear research centers, medical centers or industries are considered as radioactive organic liquid wastes. These wastes may present radioactive and chemical or biochemical hazards requiring treatments to remove or destroy chemically or biochemically hazards components. The processes such as insulation, wet oxidation, 
acid digestion, electrochemical oxidation and distillation can be applied for treating radioactive organic liquid. Now the incineration. The incineration is used for reduction of a solid and liquid radioactive waste volume, downscaling land requirements for disposal. Incineration combusts or oxidizes waste at high temperatures generating as end products of complete incineration like carbon dioxide, water, sulphur dioxide, nitric oxide and hydrogen chloride gases. The emission control equipments for the particulates, sulphur dioxide, nitrogen oxides and products of incomplete oxidation are needed to control the emissions of regulated air pollutants. Now we will be talking about the wet oxidation. The organic components of radioactive waste such as ion exchange resins, foams, cellulosic waste and liquid scintillation can be transformed, degraded or immobilized using wet oxidation. Now the acid digestion. The students Acid digestion is an oxidative destruction technology for some liquid organic wastes like hexane and organic constituents of mixed waste such as cellulose, paper, polyethylene, latex, rubber, tivic, neoprene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene and exchange resins, filters, plastics or chlorinated cutting oils organic that may reduce the waste volume of 20 to 100 times. Now dear students we will be talking about the distillation. Distillation is a radioactive waste volume reduction technique used for pre-treating liquid scintillation and miscellaneous solvent waste in conventional equipment. The process is simple known and cost effective if the valuable solvent is recycled or reused. Now dear students, we will be talking about the treatment of solid waste. Solid wastes are produced by all applications and uses of radioactive materials. In normal operations and maintenance activities, solid, low and intermediate level wastes are generally segregated into combustible, compactable and non-compactable forms. Treatments for solid waste are used to reduce the waste volume or convert the waste into a form suitable for handling, storage and disposal like decontamination. The decontamination objectives are mainly to reduce the volume of equipment and materials required storage and disposal in licensed disposal facilities, to remove contamination from components or systems, to reduce dose levels in the installation and to restore sites and facilities to an unconditional use condition. Their students, the contamination processes may divide into chemical, electrochemical and mechanical processes. Chemical decontamination. In the chemical decontamination are used concentrated or dilute chemical reagents in contact with the contaminated item to dissolve the contamination layer covering the base metal and eventually a part of the base metal. Now the mechanical and manual decontamination that included wet or dry abrasive blasting, grinding of surfaces and removal of concrete by spalling or scarifying, washing, swabbing, foaming agents and latex pebble coatings. These techniques are mostly applicable to the decontamination of structural surfaces that may be cleaned by sweeping, wiping, scrubbing or removed by grit 
blasting, scrapifying, drilling and spalling. Then the compaction. Dear student, compaction is performed in order to reduce the waste volume and concentrates the radionuclides, plastics, paper, absorbent material and cloth are compactable in conventional compactors. Metal pipe, valves, conduit, wood and other like items are compatible in super compactors. Second, cutting. Cutting and sawing operations are carried out mainly on large items that consist usually of metals or plastics. This waste has to be reduced in size to make it fit into packaging containers or to submit it to treatment such as incineration. The cutting is carried out either in the dry state in cells using remote control when necessary and with convention tools or underwater. Now the crushing. Dear student, crushing techniques may be used for size reduction of fragile solids like glass, concrete, ceramics. In principle, all types of mill, grinder and crushing machines of conventional technology can be used. Now, we will be talking about the shredding. Shredding reduces void space and it is used particularly effective when plastics are compacted, air which is trapped between the folds of bulk plastic and in plastic bags and sleeving takes up storage space when the plastic is shredded, better use is made of the waste containers space. Incineration. The size reduction, mixing and blending of the solid waste is necessarily for successful combustion operation. Dear students, we will be discussing now electrochemical treatment of radioactive waste. The electrochemical treatment, electro remediation, also known as electrokinetic remediation, EKR processes is classified as physiochemical technology by the electrochemical transformation or destruction of organic and inorganic wastes, which offers many advantages such as the capacity to remove organic and inorganic pollutants by applying direct electric current into the soil. The EKR is easy to operate is capable of mineralizing the organics into carbon dioxide and water completely without emission of any toxic materials like dioxins. Now dear students, we will be talking about the destruction of radioactive organic wastes. The processes developed for the removal of organic contaminants from the bulk water using graphite based absorbents using graphite based adsorbents with electrochemical regeneration at the University of Manchester was adjusted for the destruction of radioactive organic wastes, especially oils contaminated with alpha radioactivity produced at Magnox Limited nuclear decommissioning site in United Kingdom. Did students this approach comprises four stages emulsification. The oil is contaminated or emulsified in water using Clax 200S as organic emulsifying agent to give a stable emulsion. Second, adsorption. The emulsion is vigorous, mixing with a graphitic adsorbent NYXTM 1000 supplied by the RVR Technology Limited by fluidizing the adsorbent using air sparking, a quick adsorption is produced by the non-porous nature of the NYX TM. Third, sedimentation. When the fluidizing air is turned off, NYX TM particles precipitate to form a bed in the anode compartment of the electrochemical cell. Now, the electrochemical destruction. 
two electrodes are placed either side of the bed and a direct electric current is passed through the bed that destroys the pollutant through anodic oxidation of the organic matter. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the storage and disposal of radioactive wastes. Radioactive wastes are stored so as to avoid any chance of radiation exposure to people or any pollution. Radioactivity of the waste decays with time providing a strong incentive to store high level waste for about 50 years before disposal. Disposal of a low level waste is straightforward and can be undertaken safely almost anywhere. Storage of used fuel is normally under water for at least 5 years and then often in dry storage. Dear students, deep geological disposal is widely agreed to be the best solution for final disposal of the most radioactive waste produced. Most low level radioactive waste is typically sent to land based disposal immediately following its packaging for long term management. This means that for the majority 90 percent of the volume of all the waste types produced by nuclear technologies a satisfactory disposal means has been developed and is being implemented around the world. For used fuel designated as high level radioactive waste, the first setup is storage to allow decay of radioactivity and heat, making handling much safer. Storage of used fuel may be in ponds or dry casks, either at reactor sites or centrally. Beyond storage, many options have been investigated. We seek to provide publicly acceptable, safe and environmentally sound solutions to the final management of radioactive waste. The most widely favored solution is deep geological disposal. The students, the focus is on how and where to construct such facilities. Used fuel that is not intended for direct disposal may instead be reprocessed in order to recycle the uranium and plutonium it contains. Some separated liquid high level waste arises during reprocessing. This is vitrified in glass and stored pending final disposal. The students intermediate level radioactive waste that contains long lived radioisotopes is also stored pending disposal in a geological repository. In the USA, defense related transuranic waste which has similar levels of radioactivity to some intermediate level waste is disposed of in the waste isolation pilot plant, deep geological repository that is in New Mexico. A number of countries dispose of intermediate level waste containing short lived radioisotopes in near surface disposal facilities as used for low level waste disposal. Some countries are at the preliminary stage of their consideration of disposal for intermediate level waste and high level waste whilst others in particular Finland have made good progress. Finland's Onkalo repository is expected to start operating in 2024. It will be the first deep geological repository licensed for the disposal of used fuel from civil reactors. Now, the near surface disposal. The International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA definition of this option is the disposal of a waste with or without engineered barriers in near surface disposal facilities at ground level. These facilities are on or below the surface where the productive covering is of other of a few meters thick. Waste containers are placed in constructed vaults 
and when full the vaults are backfilled. Eventually, they will be covered and capped with an impermeable membrane and topsoil. These facilities may incorporate some form of drainage and possibly a gas venting system. Near surface disposal facilities in caveras below ground level. Unlike near surface disposal at ground level, where the excavations are conducted from the surface, shallow disposal requires underground excavation of caveras. The facility is at the depth of several tens of meters below the earth's surface and assessed through a drift. Now, dear students, we will be talking about the deep geological disposal. The long time scales over which some waste remains radioactive has led to the idea of deep disposal in underground repositories in stable geological formations. Isolation is provided by a combination of engineer and natural barriers like rock, salt, clay and no obligation to actively maintain the facility is passed on to future generations. This is often termed a multi barrier concept with the waste packaging, the engineered repository, and the geology all providing barriers to prevent the radionucleoids from reaching humans and the environment. Dear students, in addition, deep groundwater is generally devoid of oxygen, minimizing the possibility of chemical mobilization of waste. Deep geological disposal is the preferred option for nuclear waste management in most countries like Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Czech Republic, Finland, France, Japan, the Netherlands, Republic of Korea, Russia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the United Kingdom and the United States of America. Hence, there is much information available on different disposal concepts. A few examples are given here. The only purpose built deep geological repository that is currently licensed for disposal of nuclear material is the waste isolation pilot plant in the USA, but it does not have a license for disposal of a used fuel or a high level waste. Plans for disposal of spent fuel are particularly well advanced in countries like Finland as well as Sweden, France and the United States. Though in the United States there have been the political delays, but in the United Kingdom and Canada deep disposal has been selected and the site selection processes have commenced. Dear students, with this we conclude today's lecture. However, nuclear site operations and successful site restoration depend on the availability of a suitable waste management routes and facilities. Effective management of both radioactive and non-radioactive waste is essential to the delivery is a significant part of the process. Dear students, Strategic decisions about waste management are informed by the following key principles. Risk reduction is a priority, centralized and a multi-site approach that should be considered where it may be advantageous, waste should be minimized and the waste hierarchy should be used as a framework for waste management decision making and enables an effective balance of priorities including value for money, affordability, technical maturity and the protection of health, safety, security and the environment. With this, we conclude today's lecture. Hope you have understood well. Thank you.